And now it's time to get into my culture, a very interesting segment that's introduced right here every Friday on Easy Friday, where modernity, especially triggered by the arrival of Christianity in Kenya, may have dealt a big blow to the African traditions and beliefs across communities. Now on this episode of My Culture, Wycliffe Oketch engages a Luo elder from the lakeside city of Kisumu on the significance attached to the chicken dish. The Luo community is regarded as one of the Kenyan communities with the most unique cultural practices and beliefs. And if we narrow down to the kitchen, quite chilling and interesting details about this culture emerge. And that is what we are about to learn from Jotham Ajiki Ondu, a Luo elder from this part of the Luo community. The chicken dish may be the favorite of many, but just how high was the dish regarded in the Luo culture? Our culture is very rich on chicken because when, uh, for example, uh, a, a son-in-law comes to the home, it is the chicken that is uh, slaughtered. And that is the ultimate, you know, respect that we can give. And because of this perceived significance, Jotham says married women were not allowed to serve the dish, let alone feasting on it. It was the man. It was the owner of the home. It was the hunter the security man who would serve from the pot from the from the fire you bring that pot to the man then he chooses the parts he gives to the children he gives to the wife or he gives to the visitors even when the visitors are there uh, the the geese uh, the, the gizzard and the buck those are two main uh, parts that it belong to the hunter or to the owner of the home because Lewis believed that when they hunt outside when they come back it will they will be you know uh, hungry of course and they want to have a delicious meal and what would happen if women ate or even served these out-of-bounds chicken parts if you are not allowed if it is taboo to eat chicken and you have eaten chicken the entire village would know and that so and so's wife is a wolf, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it's just taboo. No, nobody would imagine that a woman is eat, eating kitchen, uh, chicken. Even our mothers. And was there a way young girls learned about this practice and what was expected of them? We had very good laws. Yeah, the woman, the 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 the, the grandmother, would go a long way in teaching the the the, the girls in what we call siwinde. Siwinde was that co that uh, code for counseling the girls, and the duel was for the men. Young people grow up there, and you know your generation, you know, is taught on what to expect and what to do. The emergence of Christianity, Jotham says, was the beginning of the erosion of many African traditions. But what do modern generations understand about this tradition? Since I was born, I've heard of it. Uh, most, mo mostly the bark. Uh, women are not supposed to eat the bark. I think, I think it's just meant for the men alone. Yeah. yeah I think it's a tradition that uh, even the women themselves respect in this region. Yeah. I've just been hearing that when the chicken is being prepared, there are some parts that the children are not supposed to eat. There are some parts that the, only the men are the ones who are supposed to eat, but the names of the parts. I don't know. I learned it from my grandmother who used to cook and she used to say that this part you should preserve, this is for your father, you see, you should not eat this part. So I used to ask myself why, but she never answered me. But later on I came to find out that this was just a myth and it was just a way of just making us not eat the better part of the <laughs> kit of the chicken. And that was my culture this week. My name is Wycliffe Okech.